we are a very transversal creative company. We, we come up with ideas which are not from the watch world and we integrate them with the watch world. So yeah, and then this uh, gives you a little glimpse of uh, some of the uh, our presence worldwide. So typically our mad galleries or the MBNF labs, which are like smaller mad galleries, uh, you'll find in various places. We have 20 places around the world. You'll, you'll get a, the same blue lens, which is like right. a, a marker of what we do. It's become like a design language. Yeah, exactly. You find it on the, uh, what we call the tripods and so on. The furniture you'll find in the galleries and labs is a bit similar to this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we try to give you a little uh, hint of uh, what you'll find elsewhere. I think. And you'll find pieces uh, of our creations or inspirations of it everywhere, whether yeah. it's the, uh, the watches, of course. We're mesmerized the, outside. With yeah, the, out of sculpture? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it turning or no? Yeah. It turning, was, turning, okay. yeah. It needs some wind. It's windy. So that's an American artist. Okay. Uh, and if you know the concept of the mad galleries we have, that's what we love to do. We love to find mechanical kinetic artists mm -hmm. from around the world and then bring them to the gallery or to here. Uh, just as long as there's something mechanical and in movement and you know, we like it, then potentially it has a place uh, here at the gallery. So yeah, that's a, an example. Over there you have another one that's a, a mechanical flower. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure it's working right now, but yeah, you... Uh -huh. yeah, it's a trigger. It's and if I approach? Exactly. It has, it has different modes, but basically the sensors here will recognize you and then put it in motion for a little while. And then, of course, if you leave and no one steps in front of it, it stops. And it needs to yeah. finish the motion of it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So the clocks we do with uh, our partners, uh, Lepe. Yeah. First thing we notice. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, we've been making, uh, wow, for a long time now, since uh, 2014. So 10 years, in fact. Uh, these uh, clocks with uh, this incredible company called Lepe. They're almost 200 years old. We already... Uh, you've met them? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we know. So, yeah, we know. Okay, good. Yeah. So yeah, back in, I think it was 2012 when we started the project. A beautiful production, but very classic, kind of old-fashioned at the time. Said, hey, would you be interested in, you know, we bringing designs, you doing the manufacturing, and we creating together these new clocks. Okay, so this is your design. It's our design, so just but they're manufacturing. Okay. Yeah, that's how we do the, the co-creations, as we call them. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been doing that ever since. I think we've done 14 different clocks together. Okay, cool. Yeah. Four, five, six. Underneath. I guess six, you're six. right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, actually seven, you're right, because the top part is in two pieces. There's a cross and then there's the yes. dome on top, you're right, yeah. <laughs> I know something. You know something, yeah. <laughs> So we know uh, who has assembled uh, each watch. It's uh, a nice uh, moment when our collectors come here uh, with their watch and we ask them for the serial number and we can then make the introduction and say, well... I was saying on the first day, on, on, on Tuesday, uh, the Revolution team, I don't know how many posts they did of way presenting the novelties. Because you need, to, you need to, to, I mean, to, to, to actually to shoot, take, it. shoot it, edit, yes. and to write an article. Like, I don't know, five or six different, how do you do that in a day? Crazy, very intense. For the mid, I, think, I mean, yeah. The, the, I mean, there are a few people, but still. Yes, uh, it's a big team, to but still. To do that, yeah, guys, you're, yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a tough job that you are doing, <laughs> to cover everything in a... 
in such a, a short time. No, when you see what, what the watchmakers are, are, are doing, you know, it's... <laughs> no, it's different, it's a different space. Yeah. Different it's rhythms, extremely, different extremely precise and so on, I agree with you. But you, you have to cover during these weeks, I mean, the work during the day and at night to finish everything yeah. before posting it. And so we realized that we didn't have like a free walk uh, on the on the watch and wonders to the city or, no, or the Palex, but not and, and, and no, on, only on the yeah. event. On event was like you know we need to go there, we need to go there. So yeah, let me finish the grinding here. Oh, oh sorry. Cartoons are very important. Uh, no, it's, no, it's just this. It's an idea. How it works. Um, so, have an idea. Okay. This is, as you can see, what's important is 11th of September 2012. The watch time. is going to come out on the 26th of February, uh, March 2020. Eight seven years. and a half years, years. later. Yeah. This is my original thought. I sketch. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be cool if it always starts like that? Wouldn't it be cool if I had a watch which looked like a dog? And I've got the jaws, you can see here. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got the head, you've got the haunches, the legs. And this is really the original first sketch. From there, I come back, sit down with Eric Giroux, who's my partner in crime. He's the designer I've been working with for 20 years. He does all the rhino renderings and everything. And uh, we, we do it bulldogs. We take the most iconic one. It's the Tom and Jerry oh, one. Of course. Not. So from course there, we try and do something, and it's absolutely ugly and hideous. <laughs> absolutely. And now I'm right in the middle of my whole spaceship thing. Uh, two years later, HM6 is going to come out. So I've already designed HM6 like two years before, three years before. But I'm still doing the things which start looking like well, And we're getting there. But the thing which is, the, the three things which are important. The first is when you see this and you see all the drawing, you go, yeah, sure. Of course, <laughs> but we don't know where we're going. The most beautiful round watch. But when you do something like this, you're just exploring, exploring. Second thing is every single detail is important. A round watch, honestly, mm -hmm. is not complicated. <laughs> it's a circle, lugs, which are more or less identical, a crown, a bezel, that's it. And that's the, it. the levels of your equation, the amount of variables in the equation are not minimal. So, big, yeah. so I mean, an eight-year-old kid can do a round watch. Right. When you start doing this, every single detail has to be rethought, and you've got insane amount of variables, and around anything which is circular looks good from any side, because it's circular. Mm. And in your mind, it's, it's here, it's like a car. You know that cars which look nice from the side, but not like from two thirds, yeah. and nice from the front, but not from the back, and whatever? This is exactly it. You're, every time we change a detail here, we have to redo a 3D print and look at it in 3D and how does mm. it work. And so there are hundreds of iterations of designs. That's why this, this wall could be like 10 times this wall. Mm. And then we finally get to the, the 3D print we're happy with. Here is just like fun, then we are into mm. Rhino. And, uh, and from there, uh, we go into R&D. So mm. R&D on a product like that would be about two and a half to three years. Um, and after probably eight to 10 months at one of the meetings, I'm mean, like, guys, uh, I'm going to change my mind. And then everybody goes white. So like, All the what? Yeah. And why? Because the crown at the back is Orvirk. <laughs> and I was like, guys, this, no, I can't do this. It looks a little bit too much like an Orvirk. So yeah. actually, Serge at that meeting suggested to, instead of having a crown at the back, to have two crowns and actually integrate them in the haunches, which are also the, the, where the, yeah. um, the mobile lugs are. Um, of course, we like shredded like and, four and months. And you'll leave the space for... Exactly. Mm. I mean, then you have to then you have to redesign completely the back yeah. because then you've got a back which is here, which is actually you can see smaller, Amazing. make it larger, and when you start making it larger, you redesign everything again. You're consistent in redesigning. So that's why people look at HMs and look at them like, oh, it's like a toy. Like, good dudes, do you know how difficult this is to do? It's so much more difficult than to do a round watch. And uh, and here we go, 26th of March, 2020, seven and a half years later, it comes out. Yeah. 
Yeah. How long seven and a half years is? Yeah, yeah. So now don't get me wrong, it wasn't seven and a half years of R and D. No. There are also yeah. some no, no, the been some sketching, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. products were able to come out with them in about three years. Most are usually four to five years. Yeah. This was a lot yeah. also because I was procrastinating and other projects I, I did before, etc. Et et yeah. This is a good example. And actually I put this up because we had our, our fa first family day uh, end of 2022 when we moved in here and all the employees could bring in their kids and their spouses and everything. Yeah, my kids and will be, will be because... And know, it was like showing they can kids identify. how yeah, do you yeah. actually yeah. create yeah. from having a s dumb sketch. Yeah. So basically, the, the base of your creations are, in some cases, and in many cases, are cartoons and robots and... It, it's, it's something which has influenced my life. Okay. It's like a psychotherapy. Yeah. Right. So it's because originally I'm collecting it was toys and I, 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 can, I can identify So originally, it was very much my childhood. So yeah, yeah. it was, um, it was cars, very much airplanes. science fiction, cars, airplanes, yes. uh, etc. Uh, I always robots. be the dog person, uh, robots, you name it. Yeah. Uh, and it's true that for me it was absolutely normal to do a robot clock mm -hmm. because robots are super cool. Yes, but I mean, when I went to see the clockmaker, they were like, "What? What?" Uh, because clocks are things with a little thing. We've got hours and minutes, and that's it. So, talking so about we bring. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a very transversal creative company. We we come up with ideas which are not from the watch world, and we integrate them with the watch world.